Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Luann sent me a note, said, Steve, check out the story on NPR. Decades after foster care, she learned she was owed benefits. But where did the money go? Alexandra Ariaga wrote this, and it's been almost 45 years since a woman named Kathy Stoltz-Silvis was in foster care in Pennsylvania. She was nine when her father passed away, making her and her siblings eligible for Social Security survivor benefits. Now, she didn't become aware of those benefits until decades later after reading an investigation published by the Marshall Project and NPR. The report published last year found that foster care agencies in at least 49 states, and that's quite a few, (laughs) and Washington, D.C., have been applying for Social Security on behalf of foster youth in their care who are eligible for benefits. The agencies often keep the money, often without notifying the children or their family members or their lawyers. Stoltz Silvis followed a step-by-step guide to contacting the Social Security Administration included with the investigation, which was developed with information provided by the agency. But she hit a roadblock. Out of curiosity, I called them to find out what happened to my benefits when I was in foster care person on the other end of the line told me they were not allowed to give me that information. So she's entitled to benefits. Somebody got those benefits, but not her. When she calls them and says, who got the benefits? They go, we can't tell you that. It seems that if anybody does deserve to know where the benefits went, it'd be the person to whom those benefits were owed. Wouldn't you think? Article was published in partnership with the Marshall Project, a nonprofit news organization, In recent months, the project and NPR have heard from dozens of former foster youth who describe similar failed efforts to learn whether a state or local agency had applied to become their representative payee, allowing the agency to get their federal benefits. And that's a process that's permitted by federal regulations. So if it's permitted, you'd still think that there should be some transparency here to allow the people to know where the money went. Or if the money went. For all they know, they didn't get benefits. Or did they? Many said they tried to contact Social Security but have not been given any answers. And those who learned that their benefits were taken said there seemed no clear course for getting the money back. And by the way, I know you're going to say, Steve, but didn't the agency that was taking care of these people deserve that money to take care of these people? They might have. But you think they would step up and say, yeah, let us explain this. We got this money on your behalf to take care of you. We took care of you, and here's where the money went. So here's how much money we got, and here's where it went. Just an accounting, an accounting. A lot of times there are problems where people are involved in situations where money disappeared or got spent by somebody, and if it was spent appropriately, there's no problem. We just want to know if the money was spent appropriately or if it was spent at all. For all we know... She didn't get her benefits. No one got her benefits. Or some, wouldn't you want to know this? In an email, a spokesperson for the Social Security Administration said that for those inquiring about past benefits, we maintain records on the benefits we have paid and can answer the questions. The agency has provided guidance and training to our employees on our rules and requirements for selecting representative payees, notifying the proper parties, and monitoring the performance of foster care agencies that serve as a representative payee for a child in foster care. For current foster youth, Administration for Children and Families spokesperson Pat Fisher confirmed that both the agency and the administration are developing joint guidance to state agencies about how to handle these cases, though there's no timeline yet. Uh, Jermaine Wilson was in foster care in Washington State, said he was supposed to receive disability benefits, after he was hit by a car at the age of 15. Said he's attempted at least 10 times to get information about his benefits, but keeps getting a big runaround from the Social Security Administration. Meanwhile, Melody Massey said she was meant to receive Social Security benefits and Veterans Affairs death benefits after her father died while she was in foster care in Virginia. When she called Social Security, she said she was told by a representative that she hears this stuff a lot, but unfortunately, there's nothing they can do about it. So another person, Jordan Cayley, uh, Jaden Cayley, was 17 and in foster care when her mother died, and she became eligible for death benefits from Social Security. For eight months, back in 2019 and 2020, she said nobody told her about the benefits or that her mother had even died. She found that out from a sibling. I didn't know any of this. So for two years, she tried to get information 
from Social Security about her benefits. But she said that a representative told her that every time she called, she was put at the bottom of a wait list, so she stopped calling. Eventually, she found out the amount due to her is almost $8,500, but so far, she hasn't seen any of it. Advocates could only point to isolated cases in the past where judges have restored a person's youth benefits. Amy Harfeld, a national policy director for Children's Advocacy Institute, a nonprofit organization that works on behalf of foster youth, expressed frustration with the agency's failure to take action. It is unacceptable to ignore the youth who have been at the forefront of the requests. In the original Marshall Project NPR report, most child service agencies pointed out that it is legal for them to apply for Social Security like this and become the financial representative for foster children's benefits. Though federal regulations state that a parent, foster parent, relative, or family friend is preferred, Almost all agencies said they take the money as reimbursement for the cost of foster care. And if that's the case, great. Give them an accounting. Here's how much money we got and we applied it to this. And any time that you have a hard time getting a simple accounting, you start wondering if something else is going on. In a landmark class action lawsuit in Alaska, a district court there ruled that the state should notify foster youth before applying to receive federal benefits. Now, that case is currently being appealed. And you might say, Steve, so a seven-year-old kid is entitled to these benefits. You've got to tell them we're applying for benefits on your behalf. Yeah, you do. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do with the information, but they'll at least know. And later on, down the road, they might go, you know, I remember somebody telling me I was receiving these benefits. So meanwhile, lawmakers in the local, state, and federal levels have begun tackling the issue. Last year, federal legislation that would prohibit state agencies from using foster use social security benefits in their budgets failed to advance in Congress. As the bill's lead sponsor, a representative, Danny Davis of Illinois, put it, yes, indeed, we are still here after a year. This summer, he plans to reintroduce the legislation that would make sure benefits go to the youth while also maintaining federal support for child welfare systems. The bill would require agencies to interview foster children to identify any relative who could be appointed as a representative payee and who could set aside the money for the children once they are old enough to leave foster care. And that's the issue, is that some of these kids might be in foster care until they become adults and just go on into the world on their own. Some of them might leave and go someplace else. Let's suppose a relative comes along and says, oh, you can come live with me. Uh, does the agency notify Social Security Administration? Oh, by the way, we don't want that money anymore because they're no longer here. Send it to them. That's the kind of thing I suspect happens more often than we'd like to know. That is that the person leaves foster care, but they're not old enough to have timed out on benefits, so the benefits just kind of keep coming on in. So keep in mind here, I'm not saying that they should stop giving the kids benefits. I'm not saying they should stop paying the benefits to the foster care places if they're taking care of the kids. All I'm saying is the people who have money being paid on their behalf should be entitled to an accounting. Simple accounting. And there, I've, you know, I've, I've been involved in cases before or I've had clients call me before and say, I'm having a problem with someone, okay? Business setting, that kind of thing. And they'll say, I think this person stole money. And... Oftentimes, what's underlying that is that there was money and it hasn't been accounted for. And you fix that with an accounting. I know that (laughs) it's fun with words today on Leto's Law, but that's often the case. And I've had somebody on the other side come forward and go, here is where it all went. Say, oh, okay, this is cool. Glad you produced that. Too bad you couldn't produce it before lawyers got involved. And I've also had somebody say, ah, if he'd ever asked, I would have just sent the stuff over, never asked. So you don't know. You don't know. But when a child is having benefits paid on their behalf, you can't expect the child to stand up and demand an accounting. So they need to put these things in place and say, for instance, that when the child is in foster care and these monies are being paid on their behalf, when they leave foster care, they should be handed an accounting and a notification whether or not they still have benefits coming and what they can do about that. So there you go. 
Uh, interesting story from NPR. Alexandria Ariaga wrote that Luann sent it to me. Thank you very much. Decades after foster care, she learned she was owed benefits but does not know where the money went. Questions or comments? Put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. It is not the position in which you stand, but the direction in which you look.